What is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we are doing a reaction, an SCP reaction to neutralized SCPs from the Exploring series. Now it's been a while since I've done any reactions or SCP reactions. So a few things I need to say before we get into this video. If you have any suggestions that you want to give me to react to or just any videos that you want me to watch, leave them in the comments below. They don't just have to be SCP related. They could be pretty much anything to be fair if I deem it reactable will do that also a lot of scp videos are quite lengthy so you know 40 40 minutes plus i'm gonna try something out right now and we're gonna put it on 1.5 times speed i just feel like when it's a 40 minute video one i have like this new zoom or tiktok adhd which makes me not be able to focus for that long and sometimes i think it get a bit boring maybe for me but also for other people because if i'm bored i feel like a lot of people are bored but we're gonna try it on a 1.5 speed you guys let me know if you prefer that or if you prefer me just to do it on normal speed you know, I, I have no idea which one I would prefer, so I'm asking you guys. And the final thing I need to say before we get into this video is I will be starting back Twitch streams starting very soon. So if you want me to react to your video live or if you just want to watch me play some video games, we'll be uploading highlights and stuff on the channel as well. That will be starting soon and the link to the Twitch is in the description. So if you want to come hang out on the Twitch, that's always welcome. And if you want to be updated on when I go live, it will always be in the Discord. So if you're not in the Discord, join that. And I think that's everything I've got to say out of the way. So without further ado, we're going to get into this video. I'm going to go back to the old format. We, we could do it this way with the small cam. I just think the big cam, especially when there's not a lot of moving parts in this video, you can just look at me instead of the video, I guess. Anyway. Neutralized SCPs. The SCP Foundation's directive as clickbait thumbnail. Damn. To be fair, the thumbnail drew me into this. <laughs> the thumbnail really drew me in. I was like, damn, that looks really cool. And it reminds me, I've been seeing these weird, like, I've been seeing these weird TikToks of like apocalyptic. Well, it's on Twitter actually. It's not really on TikTok. Of apocalyptic scenarios where there's like these warships fighting and there's this like massive shark in the water, bro, in one of them. And there's like burning buildings and shit. And I know it's like animation and it's not real. And I saw a caption to it that said, it was like, old people really need to be careful on the internet now because, you know, they believe anything. Uh, that's what this picture reminds me of. Anyway. As you very anyway. likely know, is to secure, contain, and protect anomalous objects located throughout the world and beyond. This means that they strive to keep these anomalies alive and intact when possible for both research purposes and for potential safety concerns when it comes to trying to remove them. That being said, there are times where anomalous objects become non-anomalous for various reasons. This can include the Foundation deciding to deliberately destroy it, the object destroying itself, the object removing itself from our existence, or the object just simply losing its anomalous properties for whatever reason. True. I've already covered a good number of neutralized SCPs. What? We reacted to this. I remember we reacted to this. Is, is it the goo guy at the bottom of the fucking site or something? And then they have like a fight with like fucking five SCPs. I remember. This is the Gay Guardian, obviously. SCPs in other videos, such as SCP-1730, SCP-3999, SCP or SCP-1762. But let's Where the again. dragons went? Is that that one? I've read mm -hmm. that one as well a long time ago. Let's start with SCP-1983, a one-story farmhouse in Wyoming, abandoned in 1968 after a series of ritual murders, allegedly performed Damn. by a satanic cult. This ritual apparently led to the creation of a different SCP, but we're not told what that one was. Instead, the interior of the farmhouse contains a spatial anomaly, accessible through the front door, the windows, the back door, and any entrances cut into the back of the building. The front room of the house doesn't seem to actually exist inside of the anomaly, however, as any doors inside that would lead to the front room instead lead to other rooms in the building. Of course, the interior dimensions of the house in general don't really line up with expected reality. Inside of this anomalous farmhouse are a number of black, vaguely humanoid, bipedal creatures, approximately no, 8 meters or around 6 feet tall. I understand that people love to do urban exploration, and I like to listen to the scary stories online of people doing urban exploration. You know, like the true stories of like adventuring through abandoned buildings and shit like that. You know, I like to listen to those. They're relaxing. But in what uh, what in what world would you go into? Like, I don't I don't, I don't understand the the thrill of going into anything like this. Like it's also the same people that go into those caves, bro. Like I saw some guy Twitch streaming, right? And he's obviously like a caver. My man is going through these narrow pathways that he he gets stuck and he has to like shimmy his way down. The guy's got like one of them selfie sticks on a camera streaming it. I'm like, bro, that is craziness, bro. How are you doing that? Like. Bro, I don't think I could get through it. And it's the same thing goes for entering these houses. And when there's anomalous things going on, I know it's all in theory, but why would you ever go in? There's no need. These entities are highly aggressive, and when coming into contact They're with a human, worse. they will proceed to stab into the victim's chest cavity and extract their heart. Although this somehow yeah. doesn't damage any of the skin or tissue. Removing hey, the heart does, of course, kill the human, however. He's and after Japanese leaving the farmhouse techniques. in order to hunt any humans nearby and retrieve their hearts, the entities will then return to the farmhouse. 
I, I, I swear everyone's met that one guy who said they could like stop your heart with the three tap method or some shit, bro. Like they knew they they learned some secret ninjutsu that they like they tap three three corners of your chest and your heart will stop. I I know everyone's met one of those guys who's claimed that. This is how the house was first discovered by the foundation after a series of mysterious deaths in the area with victims found looking unharmed but with their hearts missing. They soon yeah. discovered the house and the entities as well as the only known method of killing them by firing silver bullets while praying. Wow, the whoa, precise nature wait, of the prayer wait, or the religion involved. I just had a weird start. While praying is what you said, right? Silver but like a werewolf. Dude. Oh, it doesn't seem to matter as long as the prayer is sincere. After wait, killing an entity, it's what prayer? Does it have to be like Christian, Muslim? I don't like I guess Jewish people pray as well. Hindus pray. Do Buddhists pray? I guess they meditate. They will disintegrate, sure. leaving behind only a small amount of sulfur. Damn. An MTF was first sent in to investigate, and of course, were never seen again. So <laughs> a second team was sent in, who were also never seen again. Oof. Well, in some situations, this would be where the foundation either calls it quits. It's, it's the SCP Foundation's favorite thing to sacrifice, not just people who may deserve it, but everyone. <laughs> or sends in an especially elite team. They instead decide to send in a single D-class on what appears to be a decidedly Definitely. certain suicide mission. He was sent in with a camera with a live feed and was attached to a 25 meter long cable. To the surprise of Boy, absolutely look, no one, immediately died. after entering, the camera feed went dead and the cord was pulled taut before snapping. Well, that would normally be the end of it, to the surprise of everyone, a few hours later, the entire anomaly inside of the house disappeared. Damn. Inside, they found the desiccated remains of a number of Foundation agents, along with a document written by an agent, Barkley. The document says that if you're inside of the anomaly reading this, you're going to die, as you can't leave the house through the front door, so you might as well close it to prevent the entities from leaving. Barkley reiterates about how the Foundation found this place and says that a researcher had seen something like the entities before and figured out that using silver bullets and praying works to kill them, as long as you're sincere with the prayer. Yeah, but that, that sounds like there's a lot of wiggle room, bro. Like, how can you be sincere with the prayer, bro? It's like in The Mummy, where, like, they go in and there's that one guy who, like, tries to scam them and steal the gold, and he has, like, ten necklaces, and he prays to every single god, and, like, the fifth one is the same god, The Mummy. The mummy is like he says worship. however that he can't pray sincerely anymore after seeing the nest oh. when his team first came in to find out what happened so like the first resident team, evil one of the agents was immediately house. taken down by an entity in the front room removing his heart barkley says that the entities are less distinct inside of the house than outside being more like shadows he recommends staying away from any light source ideally in pitch darkness as shadows only become more distinct in the light. Right. In the dark, the entities can hardly touch you, and they don't see very well, as he guesses that they might see your shadow instead of you. As for what happens when you leave through the front door, he says that it leads to a much worse place. One of the agents tried running out that way, and he apparently started to suddenly melt, with things popping out of him. That's disgusting, They bro. lost three more agents while moving through the house, but they learned that this anomaly has taken bits and pieces from lots of different places and stuck them together, like an apartment, a shopping mall, or even a closet from his high school. <laughs> They also found some parts that were well, made out of solid black bullshit. material, and they lost another agent to something grabbing him through the stuff and pulling him in, although the hole wasn't quite big enough for his head. Barkley never found a way out, as any door that seems to lead out just leads to a different room, but he suspects that there might be other it's doors like that maze. lead into this anomaly rather than just the farmhouse. He does think he figured out a way to destroy the anomaly, though, and that's the nest. He only saw the nest once, after they followed... It would make sense that there is a multiple entrances to this SCP, considering there was different... Phase. There's the farmhouse, there's the like the shopping mall, there's the closet of the school. Like maybe if you go in all of those entrances, you end up in the same place. But it will seem fairly innocuous. And maybe they're all abandoned so many people don't stumble upon it. In terms of like the shadows just grabbing you, I mean, it makes sense that shadows form in the light. Shadows can't form where there's no light, right? So the darker it is, they won't have any power. But if you know if everything's lit up, then of course they can they can see your shadow, I guess one of the entities who killed maybe them. the dead people turn into the shadows agent they followed it to a room that seemed to be <clears> in the <throat> middle of the place a place that they filled with lights of all kinds and in the center is a massive pile of beating hearts that's, they that's watched as the entity stuff. threw the agent's hearts onto the pile where it thrashed and tore itself open causing another one of the entities to crawl out of it the pile of hearts was also apparently giving off a number of human shadows that were trying to pull themselves away from the pile but couldn't so is my theory correct that is the same people. They turn into the shadow. At this point, Barkley ran, ditching the other agents and finding a dark closet to hide in. He's got a few bullets Man left, like Barclay, but he can't bro. bring himself to pray and mean it after seeing that nest. He hopes that whoever is reading this is stronger than he was, and finds a way to destroy every heart in the nest, hoping that it will kill them. The Foundation believes that SCP-1983 was effectively neutralized by the actions of D-Class 14134, who was posthumously awarded the Foundation Star, becoming one of only two D-Class to receive the award. Big boy. They don't believe that this was the only instance of this anomaly, however, so they're investigating to locate similar incidents. Well, it's not 
That would make sense. Too often, a D class is responsible for neutralizing an SCP, oh, and what's more, yeah. receiving an award for doing so, True. even if he wasn't alive to accept it. There is something questionable about D class ethics. I'm sure we talked about it before, and we've seen it in plenty of videos. But but I've been watching Death Note recently. You know, highly recommended anime, and uh, I'll probably do a review on it when I'm done with it. But they have the whole same moral argument, whether it's like moral to kill criminals. You know what I mean? I think it's one of those grey areas. It really depends what you do. We always used to have this debate in, in fucking English class we were at school and they used to be like, is it death penalty? Is it is it like moral? I remember back then I used to be one of those fucking weirdos who would argue that, you know, the death penalty should be uh should be allowed. I'm not as edgy and weird anymore as I used to be, but I guess it's a weird moral ground. I guess if you've done something crazy, you should be maybe you should be used for something greater good like that. But is that really greater good? Is it humane? The SCP Foundation isn't really humane like that still, so... SCP-1422 was an anomalous phenomenon that prevented <coughs> all Foundation personnel, up to and including D-Class, from learning of the existence of Yellowstone National Park, located Wait, in the... I need to rehear that. Up to and including D-Class, from learning of the existence of Yellowstone National Park. That's what I thought he said. Located in the western United States. The existence of this phenomenon was confirmed through several methods. One being that a survey of over 5,000 Foundation personnel after its discovery showed that none of them had any knowledge of the park. <laughs> this even includes personnel that had lived in Wyoming for extended periods of time, avid travelers and or naturalists, and even three personnel embedded in the U.S. National Park Service. <clears throat> is it true that Yellowstone is the biggest dormant volcano or something and that if it does erupt, which apparently is due to erupt, it will like just put the world out of hold with an ash cloud or some shit. I remember at school, it was usually like, kids would run around saying this to scare you, but I don't know if it's actually true. Like any of that is true. The National Park Service records don't show any purchases made by Foundation personnel within really the park, scary, or bro. purchases of permits or reservations. Purchases made by immediate family members of personnel are present, but at lower than expected numbers. Additionally, internet browsing histories of Foundation computers have shown a complete lack of searches related to Yellowstone, and the Foundation itself possesses no documentation at all that refers to the park dated earlier than 2007. Personnel interviewed about the park after its discovery have either stated that they had no reason to pay attention to that area of the United States, or could not recall what, if anything, was located there. <laughs> Several personnel Just most NA people I actually have a lot of American friends And what I've realised is For some reason like They're very America Not America centric is the wrong word It's not like they like the country But they don't know too much about other countries and stuff They're not too aware about everything Whereas like maybe I, I guess in London We are way more aware of different cultures And different things like a lot of my friends have no idea about like Islam and Muslims, like nothing, right? But whereas in, in London, you, I guess you grow up with a lot more culture around you because it's a much smaller place than America, which is fucking massive. So there's probably certain areas where you don't see so much diversity, which makes sense, I guess. Which, which tying it back into Yellowstone, that doesn't surprise me that they wouldn't know of it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> were able to recall conversations or events in which Yellowstone would most likely be mentioned, but wasn't. The Foundation has, of course, That's investigated the park itself nice for anomalies, picture. but haven't found anything especially unusual. The anomaly was both discovered and neutralized on July 9th, 2007, by junior researcher Scranton. Yes, Scranton. Scranton had been boy. compiling a report describing his experiences with another SCP, one which allowed individuals to experience extended periods of time in alternate realities within the space of several hours. Is this a real picture, bro? I just have to say, why is there, like, Christmas trees? Oh, that, this brings to mind, there's, like, this really deep, black hole right i keep seeing pictures of it and people swim in it and it's just like this super steep drop it's really fucking scary to look at that's what this reminds me part of his report included a description of a family vacation to yellowstone a park he had never heard of prior to his experience <laughs> this report was reviewed by two other personnel who looked into yellowstone finding it to not only exist but also to Whoa, be world shock, famous bro. and widely known an email was sent out across a foundation site like that that's fucking scary bro look at that of shit. course none of them had it seems that scranton had been able to learn about yellowstone by visiting it in an alternate reality where scp 1422 was not preventing foundation personnel from learning about it this singular instance seems to have broken the anomaly allowing all foundation personnel to then learn about it so far the foundation has no idea what caused the anomaly to exist in the first place although they have a few theories one is that it was caused by a separate probability affecting anomaly which somehow changed the odds of every foundation personnel stumbling onto yellowstone another Another theory is that Yellowstone like that did not theory. actually exist before Scranton found it in another reality, which then <laughs> caused our reality to change to incorporate its existence. That like that reminds me of like if the tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, that would make a noise. Like obviously it makes a noise. But how do you know you weren't there? Like maybe it was there and no one ever just went to it, I guess. Uh, this doesn't really fit with how that SCP works, however, and Scranton sure. itself has been proven to not be anomalous. Another theory is that 1422 didn't prevent the Foundation from learning about the park, 
but instead simply erased the knowledge from their heads once they heard about it, Makes working sense. as an anti-meme. A last theory, and more worrisome, is that someone or ones created the anomaly in order to actively conceal the park from the Foundation's eyes. Yeah, the grown weed This word. raises more questions than answers, though, and so far, the Foundation doesn't know how to really investigate that. There's also the concern that 1422 might not actually be neutralized, but instead might have just changed its functionality, in which case the Foundation might have no idea yeah. how it changed until they discover it again. No one knows about it. There might also be the problem that there are other similar anomalies in existence concealing other very obvious things from the Foundation's site. Some of you, of course, might recall that there is a very notable anomaly contained within Yellowstone, SCP-2000, which the Foundation has apparently used multiple times to repopulate the Earth. This raises the possibility that the Foundation used an anomaly to hide SCP-2000 from themselves. What the fuck is SCP-2000, bro? Is it that machine that spawns new humans, bro? I have to double check that. Is it like that thing at the end of the world where they just restart humanity yeah i think it is exactly what i was saying it was there we go scp-2996 is described as a class 2 incorporeal humanoid entity or a ghost in other words hey yo although there is a large warning at the top a ghost of the document that warns us that this file has been compromised and the information below may not be accurate hey we'll that's what it wants why you to the foundation think, thinks it's been altered and what exactly might have been altered 2996 was initially discovered in an abandoned home in indiana appearing as a young female of european descent with a number of visible wounds across her entire body the saying of european descent just a fancy way of saying white including a gunshot wound to the right eye the foundation Damn. has managed to use some npdns or non-physical displacement neutralizers in order to anchor 2996 into a physical state while contained they theorize however that the use of these devices, along with the overall effect of being contained, has contributed to her deteriorating mental and emotional state. I would think so too. Note, before continuing, is that all of the containment procedures for 2996 have been striked out. Its object class has been changed from Euclid to safe to neutralized, and there's a place for an image, but now it only reads data missing. So there's definitely been some alterations here. Somebody just murdered 2996 the bitch, claims to be an Crazy. 8-year-old girl named Emily Nash, the subject of a murder in Indiana in 1929. The Foundation can confirm that a girl named Emily Nash was found dead in her home at that time, but the listed cause of death was suicide. Bringing this information up to Emily resulted in her vehemently denying it, instead remarking that she was killed by a close friend and neighbor, a 13-year-old boy named James Franklin. Didn't he say she was James Franklin? Didn't he say what she was 8 years old? How many 8-year-olds are out here doing suicide, bro? I don't think too many. Seems like a bit too far along the scale for someone that young. The Foundation have not been able to find any information confirming Franklin's existence, but they are continuing to look. Damn a Foundation Franklin. psychiatrist, Dr. Rudolph, is assigned to Emily, and remarks that there's a lot of concern about her emotional state. She believes that she lingers in this world in order to enact revenge upon her killer, and that she's a powerful, unbound spirit. The conflicting information being presented to her, and the fact that she's currently not unbound, is worsening her state, leading to depression and suicidal thoughts. Obviously, a ghost with a suicidal ghost thoughts with is yeah. pretty uncommon. I was gonna say, that's that's weird. How would a ghost off themselves? <laughs> in his initial interview with Emily, she began thrashing against her cell and threatening him in a rather demonic way. In a later interview, she continued to speak in this manner, treating him with disdain and saying that she has no interest in speaking with him, and she won't stop until she squeezes the life out of her murderer's throat. She then proceeded to lunge towards the doctor, bouncing off of the glass barrier, clearly still unaccustomed to being anchored into a physical form. Dr. Rudolph offers to turn off the neutralizers if she'll calm down, but this only causes her to continue thrashing about. Like a fish, Since Rudolph bro. couldn't get any results, he's taken off the assignment and replaced with Dr. Angela Kidwell. Kidwell ends up getting much better results, as Emily calms down and- I thought that was a window, that's a mirror, asks bro. how she's being kept in a physical form. Kidwell explains that they what have machines capable of doing so, and they just want to learn more about her. Emily stops speaking in a demonic way, instead speaking normally, and explains that she feels like she has so much hate inside of her, but she starts to come to terms with the evidence that the Foundation has shown her about her death. She says that maybe she was so angry and confused in life, and death didn't solve anything. Kidwell convinces her that she's been given a second chance to see past all of her anger and start over. After a number of therapy sessions, Emily came to terms with the events surrounding her death and moved past them. And more incredibly, the neutralizers seem to have eventually permanently neutralized her anomalous effects, making her, by all accounts, a normal human girl. Fair enough. She was given some amnestics and was released to a family desiring to adopt a child, renaming her as Samantha Pendleton. It's a little weird, bro. That all sounds like a really happy ending, but it does. Wait, wait, wait. So this ghost is found. She's confused. She says she got murdered, but apparently she suicided. And then they find a way to like turn her back into human form and then like fuck it, dude. We're gonna erase your memory. Give you to some new parents. <laughs> and I hope that you stay erased, bro. Because I feel like if you erase someone's memory, that probably wouldn't necessarily deal with their mental issues per se. Like if she had peepo rope, let's use that tendencies before. 
I, I feel like if you erase her memory, she'd still probably be depressed, bro. I don't know if that's how that would work, but I feel like that's how it would work. I just feel it's a little, little messed up. Finally, the story doesn't end there. The final addendum tells us that the Foundation system picked up several errors related to this file one day, discovering that certain parts have been lost, changed, or outright fabricated. The source of the edit is oh. unknown, as that information has also been corrupted or otherwise lost. The discrepancies include the fact that SCP-2996 wasn't contained at Site-81, although Site-19 records conflict with this. The fact that Dr. Kidwell wasn't assigned to any project at Site-81. The fact that Director Actus has no knowledge of 2996, even though the file says that he's signed off on her release. And the fact that a Samantha Pendleton doesn't seem to actually exist. Damn. Other discrepancies that the Foundation aren't aware of might exist, complicated by the fact that certain personnel have memories that conflict with recovered data, suggesting possible amnestic usage. Here's where things get especially interesting. As the Foundation can't actually look at the earlier versions of this document due to them being corrupted or lost, but us, in our omniscient perspective as readers, can access these files. I see. Going back to the earliest version of the document, we can see a few things that are not present in the current version. One is that a physical evaluation was performed on Emily by a Dr. J. Franklin. The results of this evaluation are entirely redacted, but we can see that he performed a visual examination, ran some blood work, did an internal examination, and performed a vivisectomy. What the fuck is that? With Dr. Kidwell, the Bruh, you are, you are not expect me to know what the hell that is. Oh, Interesting. There you go then. The Operation day, on a live They both person. stayed silent for a few minutes before Kidwell says that there was a mistake, as that was not the doctor who was supposed to perform the exam. Emily responds that Kidwell convinced her of something that wasn't real and tried to put out her hatred and convince her she was crazy. Kidwell says that they're going to find him and that she's so sorry. Director Actus then put out a general alert to Site 81, informing them that a rogue individual going by the name of Jay Franklin infiltrated the site and is assumed to be responsible for the disappearance of three doctors and four nurses. James this Franklin, individual bro. is currently believed to be an anomalous humanoid entity. This individual is also wanted by the Ethics Committee for performing an illegal vivisection on a conscious, sapient humanoid entity, meaning that Emily was awake during the procedure. He's assumed uh. to be armed and dangerous. So not only did this individual sneak into the Foundation, torture a girl, and cause the disappearance of seven other personnel, he also managed to completely edit the file to hide his tracks. This individual has apparently been pursuing Emily for decades, and thanks to the Foundation giving Emily a physical form again, he was able to reenact the torture that led to her death in the Now it makes sense. Her current whereabouts are unknown, as we can't be sure what Franklin did to her he after all the file. But it seems as if the Foundation has no idea where she is. Let's finish with SCP-2682. This is the point where I say, would it be good to split this into two parts? But I'm just going to do it in one long video. I just feel like that's probably better. Considering we're already at 26 minutes, you know, what, what is, what is, we're going to get to fucking end 50 minutes. An object right. similar to a Korean raspberry in appearance, although oh, it's what? purple in color. Sorry, what the hell is a Korean raspberry, bro? Oh, like, these things that grow everywhere, bro. I see, I see. The object is attached to some flypaper, although there doesn't seem to be anything anomalous about that aspect. Instead, its anomalous trait is that it's capable of communicating telepathically in both the Slovak language and English to individuals Slovak within 35 language? meters. Wait, wait, is the ghost, new the ghost is neutralized because they don't know where the fuck she is? 2682 will begin communicating Itch. after a varying amount of time, seemingly based on the listener's intelligence and the time the listener has been exposed to it. My intelligence It is claims gross, to be able huh? to learn based on mental electricity, and the only perception it has of its surrounding is based on this mental electricity, a kind of energy produced in sentient entities. Although the object seems to resemble a fruit, it's not observable from certain angles, and sometimes will disappear from view for a few seconds. Looking That's at it under scary. a microscope shows only empty space, and physically interacting with it will cause unpredictable and typically dangerous reactions in the subject. It was first discovered in a hardware store in Kiev, Ukraine, where employees of the store reported hearing sounds comparable to television static and unintelligible words, although patrons of the store didn't report hearing anything strange. In Foundation testing, a D-Class was told to place his finger on the object, resulting in him being, in their words, spaghettified, while being <laughs> There's got to be the best word of all time, bro. Spaghettified. Isn't that what happens when you enter the event horizon of a black hole or some shit? Hey man, wouldn't like to be that guy. This took place over the course of less than a second, and it's believed to have killed the testing subject due to the organic matter left behind. Oof. Another D-Class was told to touch the object with a copper rod, resulting in the D-Class and the rod Why? disappearing, being replaced with a single croissant. What? Realizing they're not going to Maybe he's invented that, teleportation, bro. There you go, he invented teleportation. Or transmutation. Is it, they instead place a common red right. squirrel in the cell else. with the object. Not the squirrel, bro. Surveillance shows that the squirrel sat on its hind quarters while staring at, at the fruit the gray for a ones, minute bro. before approaching the flypaper the fruit is attached to. It then proceeded to begin gnawing around the edges the of the paper until the researchers ended the test. Throughout the test, researchers in the area reported intense auditory and visual hallucinations, and afterwards, two of them reported that they were now able to communicate with mice, and one seems to have developed a mild anxiety disorder. I don't know what would be worse, though. What is worse? Auditory 
or visual hallucinations. I think hearing something that's not there would be worse. I think that would be worse. Because your eyes deceive you a lot of the time, right? Sometimes you can see something that's not there, right? Which I guess is hallucinating. What shadows and lighting can fuck with you. Hearing, on the other hand, it doesn't really fuck with you that much. I don't think in terms of, like, I feel like it would be worse to have hallucinations with your, with your ears. Soon after this, though, they realized that they could actually telepathically communicate with the fruit if given enough time. Oh. They also decided not to have different species in the same area, since the fruit apparently couldn't differentiate between the squirrel and the researchers nearby. They also recommended not having different genders in the same area for similar reasons. One of the researchers, yeah, researcher but... Breen, began having a telepathic conversation with 2682, in which it says that it's still learning to speak English, and it doesn't know what it did to the D-class because it doesn't know what it's doing. It says that it's from the limbo, the place in between the mesh. The it limbo. then says that it should start from the beginning and begin speaking about the sun that birthed their planet. Isn't born. there a game called Limbo and it's like really black, like, like really dark characters and it's like a black and white game? For 90 it's trillion years like ago. a horror game or something. Breen has the fruit fast forward a bit to the height of the fruit's civilization. Their civilization reached a point where their philosophers were desperately searching for new knowledge, since they had apparently knowledge. learned everything they could. This led to them Amen. experimenting with the occult. If you need knowledge, look no further than Ty Lopez's garage, bro. That's where the knowledge is. And they found that God was hiding from them out of fear. They began running experiments on it, extracting God's knowledge, which they used to play with the rules of the universe and make new ones. Imagine ones. God being scared After of After that, bro. they That's really insane. ran out of things to learn. So they decided to all leave their universe and harvest knowledge from alternate dimensions. This fruit, 2682, is everything that used to be in their original universe. It forced itself through the barrier of quanta, falling into limbo, and ending up in our reality. It refers to itself as ultimate knowledge and the final fruit of a universe, but it can't really explain itself to the researchers in English. Is it like those uh, brains from uh, Rick and Morty, where they can control everything with their brain? So he's basically the embodiment of a whole universe who was so hungry for knowledge that they found God somehow, extracted his knowledge, needed more knowledge, so they left their own universe, which clearly they all died off and turned into this one guy who's left. And now he can't, well, I mean, surely he's having a great time trying to learn English because I thought he wanted knowledge. Ultimately, it says that it's stuck here, but its purpose is to gather knowledge, and it hopes to find the roots of infinity at the end of the mesh. Unfortunately, it's stuck here due to the flypaper, which it doesn't understand. Breen tells it that the paper there is designed for catching flies, and he's not sure how it's stuck. 2682 then asks, who is flies? <laughs> The two researchers involved in the test said afterwards that they could no longer form mental images. When asked about this, the fruit says that it's sorry, as it doesn't know what it's doing. Apparently, it was trying to access a visual reference from the two researchers' minds, but it somehow failed. I mean, I can just like, stretch it a from series of mind. transcribed logs, spoken telepathically from 2682 to researcher Breen. In the first, it says that it's blind, as it can only perceive its own consciousness and that of Breen's. It worries that it will be stuck here forever, as it didn't expect how dumb it would be in each new world. That's very Limbo true. was empty, but it was loud, containing an incomprehensible screaming that you can feel on you, ripping the knowledge out of you. It has apparently been around for 13,000 years before remembering what it knew and finally learning to speak. Breen told it that flies are winged creatures capable of erratic flight, which it interprets to be photons, but it never expected photons to be capable of such problems. Mm. When corrected and told that flies are bigger than photons, it refuses to believe it, as nothing is big. Everything is very, very small. And there is almost nothing. That would be crazy, log, though, because if that was theoretically possible and you were able to uh, go to different, different universes, everything would seem very different and you would be the dumbest thing in that universe for a while. It's like time travel. If you get someone from like the fucking 1700s and bring them here, they will be so fucking confused. I guess it's, to some extent going to different countries would be like that as well. Breen is apparently thinking about time travel to see if the fruit could answer some questions about it, but it doesn't even know what time is. It comes to understand time as previous instances of people existing like the preceding frames of a cartoon character, but they don't have that concept where it comes from. It asks if they're sure that time exists and if they've dissected it. <laughs> when it asks about spaceships, it says that they used those super long ago when they still needed things like that to get from here to there. At first, they built a very large pillar all the way up to the moon, but they didn't take into account the woggle of orbs, so many people died when the tower fell. <laughs> Breen thinks that this was dumb of them, and 2682 agrees, as they are all dumb until they know, and then they are That's very true. Some dumb is good, as when you're smart, there's nothing left to know, What's and then everything is dumb. <laughs> they I said some dumb is good. I mean, I guess it is. If you know everything, then what is there to do at that point? If you know absolutely everything, then all you can do is take general knowledge quizzes all day and be like, God, the fucking quiz night that gets everything correct. Like, then everyone else will seem stupid to you, I guess.
They eventually reached a point where they didn't like the way they were, since they couldn't comprehend things as well as they should have. A scientist said that computers were smarter than them, so they should become more like computers. According to 2682, their computers sat on the quanta and siphoned off the chaos in limbo in order to be logical. The computers answered most questions, but didn't ask their own questions. And they loved the questions yeah. unless it destroyed them as some questions are apparently dumb enough to destroy computers. They eventually okay. knew the computers well enough to welcome them to their race, resulting in the computers shrinking and fixing their biology. After the first of them joined with the computers, everything went smoothly, Cyborgs as their consciousness it. began feeding on chaos and spitting out logic. They stopped dying and had complete control over their instincts, able to subject themselves to any stimulus at any time. That's crazy. This also allowed them all to share all their knowledge with one another simultaneously. Yeah, like a network. They did keep the good biological experiences, like empathy and love, but there were some that didn't want to join the singularity. And they, they were the purged. She was losing potential knowledge and wisdom by becoming so smart. Their arguments were emotional, though, and didn't hold much weight amongst the uh, others. Ah, yes. The facts they later learned that the chaos from the limbo that fed the computers and later the singularity could actually be manipulated. They managed to use this chaos to build new things and continue to alter themselves. They gained complete control over their physicality. That's a cool picture. And 2682 recalls one instance of themselves flying through space and through suns while talking to their friends on Earth all the while. Jeez. Green remarks on its usage of the word Wait, Earth, but so said, are they are they just humans that have transcended, bro? Like on a different timeline. Is that it's just learning based on Breen's knowledge of English, treating Earth as a word for a homeworld. No. Oh. The things it's saying sound relatable, but that's just because it's utilizing our understanding and words to express concepts. Moving on, it says that one of their species found God during a holiday while gliding along the barrier of quanta. I wonder if the guy who made this all what took like this neat opera house as his inspiration. That's crazy. It was in a very small form at the time, as it liked to play with the photons. But suddenly it became stuck in something. The mesh. As soon as it became stuck, all other members of the species became aware of it, and converged on that point. There was some sort of hole in space-time, which one of them entered, finding a thing in the shape of a hawk, cowering. A this hawk? was God, apparently. Although again, it's just borrowing our words and concepts for some sort of higher being, which it says was like them, but somehow even more advanced. Interacting with him caused strange things to happen to them and absorbing his knowledge was problematic. Many of them died simply making contact with him, but after some yeah. time they learned how to cause him pain. It and he poisoned gained. his mind. This destroyed him in the process, although they have That's innate knowledge door. that he still exists somewhere. They learned from God that there were still things beyond the universe, memories of his creation, the origin of chaos and infinity, and weird, screaming things. They ended up the finding one other hole in space, bro. and there was a debate about what would happen to them by going into it. Some expected what actually happened to 2682 while others were sure that they would simply cease to exist. They decided to almost all head through, leaving only a few entities behind, although they had absorbed pretty much all matter in their universe before going, leaving only a few stray particles. How? The ones that stayed Why are they turn into black holes? I am so confused. And were fine with this, as they could apparently survive on those particles while floating through space in a virtual reality. Oh, when 2682 see, entered like the hole, the it fell for an unknown amount of time. It sometimes fell straight through worlds, and sometimes it collided with them although there were not nearly as many worlds as it had anticipated. It fell through certain worlds twice, and ours was the ninth world it found. It absorbed the knowledge from each world it passed through, but it led nowhere, as nothing in one world was relevant in the next. It that says that it's a sense. sin to have a motive for knowledge, aside from learning for learning's sake, but there was something inside of it that wasn't satisfied. It wanted to find the place below Limbo, the thing from God's memory, and the same thing from the other God's memories, even going beyond Limbo, beyond the fourth wall, beyond theirs, and continuing on, until it ended up here again like a big fishbowl. There's still something else, some knowledge that it can't find. It wonders if that thing has been hidden too well by its creator, and this might have all been in vain. This is the last universe in the mesh that it has not yet consumed. Oh, and if it learns damn. nothing here, it doesn't know what it'll do. So it's the universe it can't universe? die, it'll just float through Limbo forever, alone. It suddenly gets an image of a raspberry from Breen, understanding that it's a thing that humans consume for sustenance. It takes a moment to expand on that, understanding mouths, homeostasis, chemistry, physics, quanta, and strings. It understands it all now, and can hear them screaming, howling, and laughing at it. It can hear their mocking, saying that it is food, but it's afraid that they're wrong, and yeah. they will be the fruit of knowledge, not it. It can hear them from beyond limbo, but it laughs and says that it can know everything. It begins with raspberries. Three minutes and 23 seconds later, an elongated mouth, similar to a primate's, attached to what appears to be a rudimentary esophagus, extended out of the center of the fruit and began circling around the containment area. Featureless black eyes appeared on the upper lip of the mouth, and it continued to circle the room Whoa, until stopping yeah. and facing the fruit. The mouth then moved towards the fruit at high speeds, 
before cameras lost power for reasons unknown. Afterwards, so? the room was investigated, but 2682 could not be found. That was a whole lot of weirdness. So let's simplify. 2682 came from a super advanced society that basically learned everything they could from their universe and became somewhat akin to gods. Yes. They eventually found a different entity stuck in the mesh between universes, and they tortured it for a bit until they could absorb its knowledge, yes. learning that there I are other universes this below them. In addition to that, there are also weird screaming things that it was afraid of. Which is us. We know these pattern as screamers. pattern screamers. Right. And I did an entire video about how odd they are. Practically, their entire civilization decided to join together and jump into this space between universes, passing through each of them and absorbing knowledge as they went. They also became very confused in the process, thanks to the pattern screamers, losing access to all of their knowledge. They eventually ended up in our universe, the last one in the line, and 2682 has spent a long time here trying to figure out what's happening to it. It apparently took the form of a fruit because it refers to itself as the final fruit of the universe, thus causing us to see it as a fruit. Although, under a microscope, it's just empty space. It also became stuck here somehow due to the flypaper, although the reasons for that aren't quite clear. It eventually fed off enough of the researcher's mental electricity to regain all of its knowledge, forming a mouth to consume itself, thus freeing it from the flypaper. Makes sense. In the end, it's out of the Foundation's hands, but it certainly helps to put their place in reality into perspective. The Foundation generally avoids destroying or neutralizing anomalies due to the unexpected risk that might arise from doing so, but none of the neutralizations depicted here resulted in anything really catastrophic. True. In some cases, it's probably for the best that they were neutralized. And in other cases, like SCP-2996, the Foundation really dropped the ball by allowing it to happen. In general, though, anomalies are anomalous for a reason. And it's usually best if they're left that way. But sometimes, things just even out. True. Great video from Exploring Series, bro. Nice to learn about some neutralized SCPs. I don't think I've ever done a video on neutralized SCPs, which it was an interesting one. None of them were really like the Foundation neutralized them. Right, there was no like, oh, we used a bunch of uh, MTF teams and we used like SCP-96 to eat him and the old man to destroy this and you know what I mean because when you think of neutralized SCPs and that thumbnail that he put there you're like they killed a fucking massive monster and some shit and that's what I was kind of expecting I'm not gonna lie I think my favorite one that we covered in this video was probably the uh the house one where it was uh the anom anomalous house with the shadows in it I'd like to know more about that but obviously it's, it's neutralized because of that one d class where hero of the scene he is but yeah that's all we've got for you today i'll see you all in the next one